Okay, at this time I'd like to ask another member of Join the Impact to step forward to speak. Uh, James Croft is a graduate student at the Harvard School of Education. And although he hails from London, he is now a proud resident of Cambridge. Wow, I wish it wasn't quite so cold. I'm, I'm overcoming a, a bit of flu today, but I'll give it the best I've got. I grew up wanting to be a politician, to have the chance, the responsibility, the privilege of representing the public and expressing my values. And as I've grown up and got a little wiser, I've realized that politics is messy. There are all sorts of constraints on what you can do, checks and balances, compromises, complexities. It's rare that you have the opportunity to exercise absolute power. Rarely do you have the chance as a politician to demonstrate your values in a single clear act that will affect the lives of countless people you represent. But in February, it all came down to a pen. One man, one pen, one decision. When a bill passed by both the New Jersey State Assembly and the Senate, granting full marriage equality to all New Jerseyans and ending the five-year failed experiment in discrimination on civil unions, crossed Governor Chris Christie's desk. Governor Christie faced a clear moral choice that day would the voice of the New Jersey legislature be heeded? Would he stand strong against the voices of inequality in his party? Would he finally grant equal rights to citizens and families of the Garden State who have already been waiting far too long? Hell no. Or would he buckle under the pressure of his presidential ambitions, back down in the face of bigotry, and fail to take the principled stance? He vetoed the bill. He passed the buck. He said the question should be put to a vote. It should be left to the people of New Jersey to decide. Our rights, the rights of people like us in nearby New Jersey, put to a vote. With great respect, Governor Christie, you have forgotten which country you are in. In the Federalist Paper number 10, James Madison wrote, Measures are too often decided not according to the rules of justice and the rights of the minor party, but by the superior force of an interested and overbearing majority. That is why this fear of tyranny of the majority is why the USA is a constitutional republic, yes. not a direct democracy, and all American citizens are protected by a Bill of Rights, which states unequivocally that no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Thank you. Yes. He has also forgotten what state he represents. Because New Jersey too has a constitution, and that constitution says that all persons are by nature free and independent and have certain natural and unalienable rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life and liberty, of acquiring, possessing and protecting property, and of pursuing and of obtaining safety and happiness. What this means is, as Madison, the founders understood, you don't put civil freedoms on the ballot. You don't put natural liberties to a vote. No. You no. don't risk unalienable rights on a poll. The last time New Jersey did that was 1915, when they held a referendum to decide the question of women's suffrage. The result? 58 to 42 percent against emancipation. Yeah. And Christie says today we should make the same mistake. Boo. Boo. Now, 
Chris Christie has a reputation as a plain speaking man. He says what he means, and he means what he says, and I respect that. And when Christie was sworn into office as governor of New Jersey, he said these words. I, Chris Christie, I know I don't look the part, I, Chris Christie, elected governor of the state of New Jersey, do solemnly promise and swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey. I will, to the utmost of my skill and ability, promote the peace and prosperity and maintain the lawful rights of the said state. So help me God. And then in his inauguration speech, which followed that oath, he continued to all the people of the state, whether you voted for me or not, whether we have agreed or disagreed in the past, today I am your governor. I promise you this, I will work every waking hour of every day to build a better life for all of our citizens. When that bill crossed your desk last month, Governor Christie, that bill protecting the inalienable rights of the citizens you represent, the lawful rights you pledged to protect, you had a chance to fulfill that promise. In your hand, in that pen, you had the opportunity to build a better life for tens of thousands of gay New Jerseyans, right. thousands of citizens who looked to you for leadership. Instead of leadership, you revealed your cowardice. Hear, hear. You took that pen and with your veto, scrawled on the Constitution of New Jersey and on the Constitution of the United States of America. You have betrayed your country. You have embarrassed your state. You have broken the oath you made before your God. And you are not welcome here in Massachusetts. No. Chris Christie, go away! You're not welcome in MA! Chris Christie, go away! You're not welcome in MA! Chris Christie, go away! You're not welcome in MA!